In this video, I'm going to show how to get an image onto an object using the projection method. And the reason why we would use this is to get more control as to how that image is going to be wrapped around our object or around or onto our object. First, let me first let's apply an image the normal way that we know how to do it, the way we did it on that ground plane. So let's create a new material. Let's go to our file. We'll grab our picture. Let's turn our hardware texturing on. So now we can see our picture. And if we go to our 2D placement node, we can rotate. But it's a little difficult to actually get this exactly the way we want it the tools just aren't that intuitive to place it onto the sphere. If we do a render, uh, it, it pretty much just stretches and fills up the entire space of our object. And I say if we just want the image in this area of our sphere, we wouldn't really be able to do the, this method that easily. So let's come up our hypershade. Let's graph materials on selected objects. Okay, so we can see everything that we have on here. Let's just grab our image and placement node, delete it. And we have our attribute editor for our material. So let's come back. And instead of clicking with the left mouse button on file, right click on it and we have a few options we are going to use create as projection and as soon as you do that instead of going right to the file node we have this new tab called projection and everything's black because we don't have anything assigned to our image yet remember this icon will take you to the node that's associated with this attribute so if we click on this it takes us to the file one which is where we're going to choose our image that we're going to use. So let's click on this. We'll grab our image. Um, let's come up and change to viewport two. And if viewport two doesn't seem to be working, then choose a different renderer. Okay, now we can see our image being mapped on our sphere. So let's back up so we can see our projection. This is where we're going to set how our image is being projected onto the sphere. Let me close this right now, and let's look at the, uh, at the hypershade again. Let's graph this so we can see. All right, so we have our material. Then we have the projection going into our material. Now, this is a 3D placement texture, which determines how our projection is being applied to our object. Then we have our image going into the projection and our 2D placement node determines how we can manipulate this image. So let's look at our projection. When you get to this point, we have a few buttons here, interactive placement and fit to B box. Now B box is, stands for a bounding box and a bounding box determines what the furthest areas of your object are. So because this is a uniform sphere, this would be just a cube around our sphere determining the size, the overall size of our object. So if I click on this, it automatically places our texture based on that bounding box. So you can see what it's doing with this. Now, this is a interactive placement node and um, it corresponds with our 3D placement texture. So if we click on that, as I move these handles, it'll scale our placement node and you'll see the numbers change in this transform attributes. So as I shrink this down, you can see my scaling is changing. And if I wanna scale on the Y axis, then I can just grab these handles. And if I wanna scale it on the X axis, I can scale it that way as well. And 
And if we need to come in and rotate this around, if this is not the correct axis we want to look at, say if we want it pointing on the top, we can come in and rotate our 3D placement node. And you can see that our rotate value has just changed. I wasn't rotating. I'm not rotating this, the sphere right now. I'm actually rotating this placement node and it's adjusting that image on my object. So I can come in here and change this to negative 90. So it's pointing perfectly straight down. And if I want it, I can hit fit to the group bounding box again, and it'll resize it to my sphere, if that's something I would need to do. And then if we want, we can go into our 2D placement texture node to determine some specifics on our image. So if we don't want it wrapped, we can turn wrap off and it will just have that texture being placed on our object. So if we render this, you can see our image is right there. It looks a little warped here in this high quality view, but if we do a render, we can see it's coming out. Looks good. So we can um, adjust our, our repeat if we want and do those kinds of things. Turn wrap back on and it'll wrap around our entire object. So let's go back to our placement, uh, I'm sorry, our projection. And I just want to show you that there are different ways of projecting our image onto our object. Let me just turn that uh, repeat off. So we have our image coming down this way. Let's go back to our projection. So you can see we have it set up for planar right now. Um, we can change this and we have lots of other options. Spherical, cylindrical. Now each time we change these, you can see that our 3D placement node changes as well. Ball, cubic, triplanar. And each one, one of these will place your image differently on your sphere. Lost my hardware texturing. There we go. Let's go back to triplanar. For a sphere, you would probably wind up using either planar or spherical or a ball. Uh, it, it depends on the application of the image you're looking to do. I will go over another example of using a projection using the triplanar. I'll show you an example of when you would want to use triplanar. And I will go over an example of projecting an image onto, onto a, a fish model. And this is using projections. So remember we have our material, our projection is determining how that image is going to be projected onto our object. The 3D placement node determines where our projection is located in world space. Our image goes into our projection, and the 2D placement node determines how our image, uh, we can manipulate our image. I just want to show you one other thing before we leave. Uh, let's go into the outliner so we can see everything that's in our scene. This is our sphere. So we have our sphere, selected. Now if I move my sphere while using a projection, watch what happens. The sphere swims through our projection. And that's not what we want. And the reason why it does this is because this 3D placement node is its own separate object. And it's projecting our image 
through this placement node. So in order to have our placement node stay with our object, we need to parent our placement node to our object. To do this, middle mouse click onto the placement node and drag it on top of the object that is using that placement node. So you can see we have our sphere and our placement node is parented underneath it. So when we move our sphere now, the placement node moves along with it and our texture stays in place. So that's a word of warning. If you're using projections, make sure you parent that 3D texture node onto your object.